Hi, Micah here again from Websites Advice and welcome to the second installment of our webinar series about website making. And for those of you who just joined us today, this is actually the second of the many webinars that we will be doing. Perhaps later, you might want to check out the first webinar we had posted on our Facebook and YouTube account. And stick with us all throughout this webinar series. So in this webinar, we will show you how to register a domain name and what to keep in mind in doing so. We will also discuss web hosting plans and we will guide you in choosing the right one for you. Again, don't forget to share and like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook too to avail of the freebies we are giving away. We'll be giving away promo codes from our web hosting providers and we'll be selecting a lucky winner from one of you whom we will help in building his or her own website with one year free web hosting subscription. So follow us in all of our social media and keep on watching our webinar series. So let's begin. Making a website needs commitment. It's like marriage. Before you marry someone, you need time to get to know the person first, right? Their likes, their dislikes, their perks, everything. It is similar to building a website. You need to have all the needed information before you start making one. Then there's the wedding. Very taxing, stressful, and a lot of things are going on. The beginnings aren't always as easy, just like in website building. The first steps are the most difficult to do. There are preparations that are needed to be done before you step on the high gear of making your own website. Then here comes the honeymoon stage, where everything is good and, and it feels heavenly. Similar when you manage to create your own website. Once you launched it, it feels good. Finally, I have a website. Then, the reality of marriage kicks in. Problems arise, decisions are needed to be done, growing family, increasing expenses, and a lot more. So in order for you to maintain the marriage, you need to grow, to work together, and to constantly invest time in the marriage. It is also like that in maintaining your website. Point is, building a website is not automatic. It's not instantaneous, and it's definitely not one-time commitment. Today, we are in the getting-to-know phase in our upcoming marriage to building websites. This is an important phase since preparation is really the key to building a strong, lasting, and powerful website. Here in Websites Advice, we'll keep it systematic for you. We will guide you in making sound decisions, decisions that are highly based on what your business is all about. Just a disclaimer though, we will not tell you what to do. We will show you your options and let you decide which option is the best for you. After all, no one knows your website or business more than you do. Now, do you remember in our last webinar, we talked about your options in building a website and we recommend the systematic way, which is starting with acquiring your own domain name. Now, a domain name has two parts, the second level domain name and the top level uh, domain extension. The second level domain name are the words or the word that comes before the dot and the top level domain name are what comes after the dot. For example, our domain name is websitesadvice.com. The second level domain name is websites advice, while the top level domain name is .com. Now, when it comes to choosing your second level domain name, that decision is mainly on you. What we only suggest is to name your domain name appropriately, something that really reflects the nature of your business. Now, when it comes to top-level domain names, there are plenty to choose from. First, it has two types, 
we have what we call as generic top level domain name and country top level domain. So generic top level domain is like .com, .org, .info, .ninja, and many more. Each of these extensions reflects the nature of your web site. Like .com stands for a company, or .org stands for organization. Then we have the top or the country top level domain. This extension tells the geographical location of a website like .ph, which stands for Philippines. Now, what's the meaning of this in naming your domain name? Simply make sure to select a domain extension that suits your website. If you want to emphasize perhaps that your products or company is based on your country, then country top level domains can be a good choice for you, like that ph or that hk, that us. There are thousands of top level domains to choose from today. And you can really customize your domain, domain name based on what it really is. However, the problem in trying to name or trying to select a domain extension for you is some domain extensions are more popular than others. So what happens is when customers or when visitors go to your website and they see that your domain extension is not that familiar to them. Um, they may be hesitant to transact with your website because it has an unfamiliar domain extension. And like that com or that um, gov or that info or that net. Perhaps that could be also one of your considerations in choosing top level domain name for your website. So that is top, or that is on how you should name your domain names. As to the registration of domain names, you need to look for a registrar. A registrar is responsible in recording your domain name in a database called registry. There are a lot of popular registers out there. Some provides a lot of options for domain name extensions like .com, .this, .ph, and some registrars are limited. So all you need to do is try to find that registrar who can offer you a wide range of domain name extensions. You can go ahead and register uh, your domain name with them and then carry it later on in your web hosting provider or website builders. That's one of your options in registering your domain name. Or your second option is directly register your domain name with a selecting web hosting provider or a website builder, especially so that those web hosting provider and website builders offer domain name registration. Now, they may offer a cheap price or even free domain name, but there is always a catch and you should always watch out for it. And you should always research carefully before registering with them. Just a few tips in registering a domain name, watch out for these things. We have what we call as hidden fees. I believe everyone is familiar with hidden fees, right? Now watch out for hidden fees or automatic add-ons or rising uh, or price spikes. Now, have you ever experienced booking a very cheap travel package thinking that you hit the jackpot? But when you were on the actual trip already, they make you pay for a bunch of little things. These are hidden charges, and it can also happen when registering a domain name. To combat this, you really need to check everything before you buy a domain name. Now, renewal price spike is another common irritant in domain registering. What happens is they offer a domain name at a very low starting price. But when you renew it after a year of subscription, two or three or five years of subscription, the price doubles or even triples comparing from the original price where you have registered it. Many registrars do this. So make sure to check out first the renewal rates of the domain name that you will buy before you purchase it so that there won't be any surprise later on when you repurchase your domain name again. What you need to look for in a registrar is if they provide domain migration. 
Now, domain migration is when your domain name is managed by a certain registrar and you want to transfer it to another registrar to manage your domain name for you. It's like uh, when you transfer to another school, you get the credentials from the registrars of your old school and submit it to your new school. Some schools charge a fee for this, some schools do not. It's the same with domain migration. Now this is something that you need to check because you might never know if you want to change your domain registrar, especially if you are not that satisfied of their service. Now, what if you want to a specific domain, but it's taken by others. Just like what Ken mentioned in our last webinar, you cannot do anything about it unless the one who registered the specific domain gives it up or loses it. Now, if you plan to reopen the same business, can you use the same domain name after you failed to pay the monthly due and it was closed? Well, the answer to that is, it depends. If it is still available, but within the time that you failed to pay your domain, you made it available for other people to register. You can still get it if you want to reopen your business, given that nobody else has registered it. Now, if you purchase a domain name, will you have perpetual ownership? Meaning, will you own it forever? Yes, if and only if you keep on paying for it. It's also like paying your bills. You will be provided of the services as long as you want so you want so so long as you will pay for it continuously. Bottom line is you are renting your domain name. Failure to pay the rent results to use of ownership and usage. Now to check the availability of domain names we can go to namecheck.com. Just key in domain name the domain name that you want and they will show you if it's available or not and i can go ahead and walk you through that website just give me a moment here please here so this is namecheck.com and this is where you can go to check if your domain name of, or the domain name that you are planning to have is available or not. It will also show you um, if the domain extension, the domain, the top level domain extension is available or not. For example, I will say um, my name is Willie. So for example, I want to name my business Willie so triple L dot com. Then you just say or you just click search. Then after that, it will show you if it's available or not. So this gray colored, it, all, it, all, it just means that it's not available. The green one, it says that it is available. So for example, I will click willy instead of willy.com since .com is not available and fun, .ho, fun and .host are the ones available. Perhaps I will choose host. Then it will, it will, there, it will show you the different registrars that where you can register your domain name. So we have GoDaddy, UniRegistry, and all of this. For example, I will choose GoDaddy as my registrar. So it will direct me to the GoDaddy's website. That's what's beautiful in using name check. So you don't need to search individually for the registrars that are available. You can just go ahead and use your website and then check the availability of your domain names and then select a registrar. So now that I'm here in GoDaddy, it will show me my different options. So I will just fill in them again and then try to see the available domain name. So you see here, there are will-y.com that's available, willy.com.ph, willy.shop, willy.asia, willy.tech. So there are actually a lot of choices to choose from, right? 
So all you need to do is try to select the best one for you. Also, including the price. This is what I'm talking about. It says here 719 pesos for the first year. What does that mean? In the next succeeding years, as you continue to uh, use your domain name for your website in two or three or five years from now and you want to renew it every year It is not the same. So in first in the first year, perhaps you will pay 719 pesos, but in the second year, perhaps it may double or even triple. So for example, I want to move purchase willy.shop. So I'll just click add to cart Wait for it and this is where you will see it. So from seven, from 100 something, it became 3,248, right? So you just need to try to see the different uh, add-ons that they added. So for example, I will say one year, then there. So 96 or 95% off, 96.60 is the price. Renews at 2,192.80 per year. So you need to really watch out for that so that you know what you're getting into. You might have bought it in a very cheap price at one year, but in the next succeeding years, it may cost a lot. So for example, I will say continue to cart. So this is another tactics of um, different registrars. They offer you a lot of products before you actually, uh, before they actually direct you to the paying, uh, paying time. So if you want to read that, then perhaps you may do so. But if you don't want, then you just click no thanks, no thanks or no thanks. And then you continue to your card. Then there you have it. So all you need to do is pay now or check out now your domain name. So you registered with GoDaddy. So you may go ahead and register again or renew again your with them your domain name after a year. Or if you're not satisfied, you can go ahead and migrate to another registrar. Just only keep in mind these things. Just like that. They said, so you know, two years, I only click for one year. So 96. And then check out. And then you will just need to key in all your uh, information, billing information, credit and debit card. And then you click save. And they will offer or they will name your, you, they will give that domain name already to you. So that's how you navigate this website, namecheck.com. This is a good option in checking your or the availability of your, your, your domain names because it already directs you also to the different registrars and all you need to do is choose the registrar that you want. Let's go back. If you have any questions regarding domain names, uh, during the discussion, make sure to comment or use our comment section below to key in all of your questions. And after our discussion, we will answer it later or we will answer it for you. Now that we're done with domain names, the second way in our systematic way of building a website is selecting a web hosting provider. So what is web hosting? In our previous webinar, we talked how web hosting can be like your house. And just like any typical house, this is the home of your website. It contains all the information of your website, including email management and all information that goes in and out of it. Meaning, web hosting makes your website available and visible in your internet. Now, when you purchase a web host, you're actually renting a physical disk space from a high powered computer or computers this one. These computers are called servers. A collection of servers are called data centers, which are managed by web hosting providers. They are in charge of connectivity, um, with, which includes software, security, support, and bandwidth. And don't you worry if this is all new to you, because we'll take a step-by-step -step approach in uncovering all the information you need to know in choosing the most suitable hosting 
for you. Now, in starting a business website, you must choose the kind of hosting plan suitable for you. Of course, you need to take in some considerations, right? The type of your business, your budget, I mean, your skill even is also a consideration. Now, there are many emerging hosting plans today that really customizes the needs of your consumers. But in today's webinar, we'll focus on the most common ones, which are shared hosting, dedicated hosting, and VPS hosting. We'll also include what we call as cloud hosting. You might ask, what are hosting plans? These are the types of service that you want for your website. Think of it like when you're deciding what kind of house you want to live in. Do you prefer an apartment, a condominium perhaps, a townhouse, or your own separate family house? Of course, that decision boils down to your needs. Similar to hosting plans, there are types of hosting plans you can choose from basing on what you need for your website. Consider this two things. Consider the amount of visitors you think your website will be having, as well as the content of your website. Website visitors, I'm talking about how many visitors will your website have? Do you think it will have a thousand, two thousand, five hundred thousand visitors in a month, in a day, on a yearly basis? How many visitors do you think your website will cater to? Second consideration is your website content. This refers to the pictures, the images, the videos, or the files that you will upload to make your website. Of course, in making your website, you need to put in pictures, text, different files, right? So this is what I'm talking about. How much content will you be using in, your, in making your website? Now, I want you to think of that for a moment because as we learn the type of hosting plans today, I want you to be guided as to what type of hosting plan is most suitable for you. We'll be looking into the kind of website suited for each of these hosting plans and check out its pros and cons. So first on our list is what they call a shared hosting. So shared hosting is widely used and the most popular hosting out there today. As the name implies, this type of hosting is shared, meaning the server that your website is also hosting is also hosting other websites aside from yours. Think of it like a single computer with one processor, one RAM, one memory, and within this computer are folders, folders of websites, including your website. So. Uh, it's a website of websites. So that is what we call a shared hosting. So technically, um, your website is being managed by one physical server along with other websites. It's like living in an apartment. Uh, living in an apartment, you have your own space, right? But you share the different resources in the building, just like you share the electricity, water sources. We have the parking space, first come, first serve, uh, laundry areas too, first come, first serve, welcome laundry areas, and elevator. And you share all of these resources with other people. It is just like that also in shared hosting. Now we have what they call as dedicated hosting. It is the opposite of shared hosting. This type of hosting plan is for large enterprises. Now a computer server, including all its resources, is all solely, solely dedicated for you. That's why they call it dedicated server. So unlike shared hosting where you share the space with a lot of users or websites, this particular server is only dedicated or be used by you. No sharing with other websites. So compared to shared hosting, dedicated hosting is much more expensive. It's like owning your or owning a big family house with your own backyard, garage, and other resources, and you don't share it with anyone. Now we have VPS hosting. VPS is mostly for small to medium enterprises. Now, VPS stands for Virtual Private Server. 
technically you are still sharing a physical server with other websites so one server with all other websites but you own your own space meaning you don't share the resources with other websites unlike shared hosting so it's like living in a townhouse though this houses are may share the same walls and they are side by side like just like what you see in the picture their spaces are their own they have their own resources like separate electric meters water meters and each has their own designated parking space now they have what we call as cloud hosting it is for any type of business actually it's an innovative way of hosting today it is very unconventional. Why? Unlike other types of hosting where a single physical server is used to manage all the data of a website or websites, cloud hosting uses multiple physical servers sharing a single network functioning as one. That's how complicated it is. So it's not relying on one physical server. It relies on many physical servers. So basically, cloud hosting compartmentalizes the data, distributes the uh, information of your website to different servers all around the world, and they work on a, nef a single network and they function as one. They categorize information and you are sharing resources with other websites in the network, but then again, it's a high performing type of hosting plan. So your website's information is not managed and processed by one single server, but a network of servers all working as one. Although, I mean, the servers, this physical servers is not present in one area. They're actually present, they can be present all over the world. So they just connect to function as one. The beauty of it is when one physical server goes down, it's automatic that another server backs it up. It's like living in a condominium or complex condominium. As you can see here, it's a legion of many private spaces with your own set of luxuries. There are many of you sharing the resources like the pool or like the elevator, but it is enough to accommodate everyone so perhaps even if the power runs out in this condominium complex there are generators to back it up right so it is similar to that of cloud hosting now that we know what hosting plans are it's time to decide what suits your website the most are you already eyeing for a particular hosting plan well let's compare them we'll look into the pros and the cons of each of these hosting plans in terms of three aspects we have price, performance, scalability, customization, security, and user friendliness. Now ready your pen and paper and get ready to list down the most suitable option for you. Now should you have any questions, remember to use our comment section below and we will answer them after our discussion. Also, don't forget to like and share our video. Now let's talk money. In terms of price, shared hosting is on top. Shared hosting is the most popular option. It's the cheapest and the most economical choice for uh, a hosting plan with five to fifteen dollars a month, sometimes even two to fifteen dollars a month. Next from the from the top is what we call as the VPS VPS hosting. VPS is one of the most ought to option if you don't have the budget for a dedicated hosting and technical skills for cloud hosting, but still wants a performing website. VPS hosting costs around $20 to $100 per month. It's a huge leap from that of shared hosting. Um, but And if you, your website really doesn't need much disk space or resources, VPS hosting can be an expensive option for you. Now, third would be cloud hosting. The ranges from that can cost $80 to 
I'm sorry, that can cost $30 to $200 a month. It's a new and innovative web hosting plan today, but it requires some technical skills. By technical skills, I mean, you know how to navigate a website. You know how it functions a little bit. And you know how to like the install software, the security plugins. You have a little bit of knowledge when it comes to, not really even a little bit, you have a huge knowledge when it comes to technical skills. Because as I said, Cloud hosting is a little bit complex and complicated and unconventional comparing to all the other three web hosting plans that we have here. And the most expensive is dedicated hosting that can cost you around $80 to $500 a month. It's a given that it's expensive given the fact that you have total control over your server and you don't share it with anyone it's totally yours and yours to manage alone that's why it's pricey compared to the three other hosting plans that we have here now let's talk about speed we are talking about the uptime of your website how fast will it load how fast will it end uh, how fast will it uh, go to your a website visitor once they access your website. Now, in terms of performance, dedicated hosting is on top. Guarantee that your website is fast since you have all the space and resources all by yourself. Expect great performance and full support as well from your web hosting provider since you are a priority because you paid a lot of money for it. There is no downside when it comes to performance, but it's really going to cost you a lot. Next, we have what we call as cloud hosting. So cloud hosting uh, is, um, is a kind of hosting plan that is high performing. The beauty of cloud hosting comes in the fact that it relies not only in a physical or a one single server, but a multitude of servers working together as one. Technically, you are sharing space and resources with other websites, but you don't need to worry about server failure because if one of the servers in cloud hosting fails, it's automatic that the other servers will back it up. You don't need to worry about uh, the resources as well because if one server runs out of resources or disk space, it can pull from other servers in the network so guarantee that your website would really be fast. Cloud hosting boasts on its flexibility. On top of that, since resources aren't really depending on one single server, you only pay for the resources you consume. That's my favorite thing about cloud hosting. It is very cost efficient. It's like paying water or electric consumption. You only pay uh, basing on what you used or you consumed. Unlike other hosting plans, other hosting plans are like paying cable or internet bill where price is fixed, whether you use a lot or a little. Now, third on our list is VPS hosting. V compared to shared hosting, VPS has more allocated resources. VPS guarantees no sharing of resources with other website. Still, your website is, share, is, is sharing a physical server with other websites. However, what they do in VPS is install a layer of software that partitions the server into their own spaces, which makes the websites separate. They are in one server, but they are separate. Unlike shared hosting, VPS doesn't have a thousand of websites operating in a single server. Shared hosting can have a more than a thousand websites in one single server, but VPS isn't like that. It is much fewer compared to shared hosting. It's like a, a layer of bread, a loaf of bread, a one loaf of bread, and there is one whole bread right in one plastic, but they're partitioned separately. So each website has their own allocated or allotted resources. Basic resources, these are basic resources, but at least 
your website won't suffer hugging of resources from other websites. It means it's fast on a regular basis. The downside is some VPS hosting providers have the tendency to oversell their spaces. Like instead of 100 VPS, uh, 100 websites in one server, they will accommodate an addition of 50 or more uh, websites in that server. This means the resources again are divided into these additional websites. From some VPS hosting providers do this because they think some websites won't really spike any traffic. By traffic, we mean the number of customers going in and out of a certain website. Though it may be true, However, as a result of this, when high traffic comes in your website, perhaps it's Christmas or it's um, a New Year's sale or 99, 10, 10, 8, 8 sale or your special locations and people are buying a lot of stuff in the internet and one of it is your website or one product is from your website, this can cause high traffic in your website. And when you share and and um, as a result of this, later on, when VPS hosting providers distributes or caters to a lot more than what they can handle, your website will become slower in times of high traffic. So, a way to avoid this is to really select a good hosting provider. Last in terms of performance is shared hosting. Now, don't get me wrong, huh? There is a reason why a lot of people opt to use shared hosting. It can deliver. It is affordable. And if you're aiming to just have, to just have a basic website, it can really deliver. The downside, however, comes in the fact that everything is shared. You do not know the websites you are sharing the server with, yet you are working and operating as a team. You don't know if the website that you're sharing the physical server with is a bad website or things like that. Now, my point here is the actions of one website affect the others at some point if you're sharing a physical server. Hugging of resources is also a common problem with shared hosting. Hugging of resources happens when a popular website is operating in your server meaning that website is pulling in more traffic than your website. So what happens is that particular website is taking all the resources with, uh, with him or the, the website, his or her website uses all of the resources intended for the websites in that physical server. It's like uh, if VPS is a slice of loaf bread, of bread with different slices shared hosting is a single whole bread and whoever needs more can just go ahead and get a big chunk of it so that is in terms of performance now let's talk about uh, growth scalability scalability is the ability of a server to grow when needed if you're website becomes a success later on, meaning more customers, you're having more sales, and you need to increase the number of files that you will upload in your website, it's time for your website to uh, grow bigger, or you, want, you might want to upgrade depending on the needs of your growing website. In terms of scalability, high on the list is cloud hosting, simply because it operates in a multitude of servers. So there are a lot of servers that can accommodate your growing website. Second is dedicated hosting. All the space and resources are intended for you and you alone. So it's a lot of space to grow in a website. And when you use dedicated hosting, it really comes with a uh, high disk space and bandwidth. So it's really, uh, it will really have a lot of room for your website to grow in the future. Next we have, next on the ranking is VPS hosting. 
Though it has larger storage than shared hosting, its scalability is limited because the server is in yours alone. Again, this is the reason why the server is being used not only by you, but a lot of websites as well. It is dependent on the disk space and resources of the actual physical server. That's why it's second to the last. You have the option to increase um, the memory, but still is dependent on the physical server's capacity. Like, unlike cloud hosting, that it can draw for multiple servers. VPS hosting can only draw or can only get resources and can only get additional memory and all of those things to accommodate the growth of a website from a single server. So if that single server only has a particular number or uh, yes, number of data or gigabyte or memory, then uh, that's the only memory that your website can uh, use. And remember, this is not only you using the website, there are also other websites using it. Now last is shared hosting. It is simply not scalable. If your business grows and you are using shared hosting, the only option uh, is to change your hosting plan if your website grows and needs more space or resources. Now let's talk about control. In terms of customization, still on top of the list is dedicated hosting. Since you own your own space, you have 100% control of everything about your website. You can install softwares, plugins, additional resources that your website needs. It's highly and fully customizable. It's like assembling your own website. You are in charge of everything. So in terms of customization, dedicated is on top. Next is VPS hosting. In terms of control and customizing, you have the same level as dedicated hosting, but I rank it second because technically it's still limited due to the fact that it is a functioning in a shared server, or not even in a shared server, but in one physical server compared to dedicated. So I think it deserves the second spot. Goes, the third place goes to cloud hosting. The complexity of cloud hosting is what makes it difficult to control. It is already difficult for an experienced web developer, how, how much more to a person who isn't really one. So because of this, cloud hosting providers do not really give full control to their user because it's very complicated. Remember, cloud hosting draws from, a phys from different physical servers around the world, and they function as one. They create one, a network, and they function as one. It's very complicated. That's why it's not really customizable because of its complexity. So it must really be handled by a person who is or who have very technical knowledge on this aspect. However, um, in cloud hosting, you can still install additional security, softwares, and plugins. So last on this list is shared hosting. Control and customization is not an option for uh, shared hosting. You pay less, so you get less control. Unlike other hosting plans, you don't have the control over your server. You are not the one operating it, and you don't have the control to install softwares or any additional resources. So it's just like living in an apartment, right? You don't have the control of who will use the elevator or who will use the parking space allotted for the building. So your parking space today may not be your parking space tomorrow. So that's customization. That's why shared hosting is in the bottom. But it really doesn't mean that they don't take care of your website. Don't get me wrong. Shared hosting can deliver. They do take care of your website in shared hosting. They really do. They do it for you. It's just that you don't have much control or a hand, a handle over it. Next, in terms of user friendliness. User friendliness refers to how, um, refers to you as the website manager. How friendly are the web hosting plans? Are you able to manage it or whatnot? So first, 
um, and I have I also have to say that when it comes to when it comes to user friendliness, some website builders or website makers don't really use this or don't really consider this as a factor but for me it's a huge factor everybody wants a fully functioning website right but nobody thinks how one will manage and maintain it if you are a big tech junkie then it's much easier for you it's no biggie to handle complex hosting plans but if you are not adept to it or information technology or technology in general, then hosting plans, user friendliness is something that you should really, really consider. Perhaps you may go ahead and say that you can hire a web developer to help you in managing your website. Perhaps you may do so, but just think that it will really cost you a lot. Uh, the wage or the cost or the money that you pay to web developers are really very high because technically you are paying for their skills. So on this list, uh, whole shared hosting is on top. It's the most user-friendly. Everything is managed for you by a person who knows how to manage or have the technical skills. So you don't have much control on the technical side, but perhaps that is okay because you don't know how to do it anyway. So perhaps shared hosting is much more appropriate for you if you really want to have a functioning website but don't have the necessary skills to really maintain it. Next on the list of user friendliness is VPS hosting. It is user friendly and customization is in your control. All you need to have is basic knowledge on software and plugin installation. Now third we have dedicated hosting. This hosting plan is second of the most beautiful, uh, most beautiful, most difficult hosting plan to manage because you are in full control of everything in your website. So you need to have the technical knowledge in managing a dedicated server or at least can afford to hire a staff who is knowledgeable in this aspect. The most difficult to manage among all the four hosting plans that we are discussing today is cloud hosting simply because of its setup remember there is no single server operating for all for your website rather than rather it is a multitude of servers and that's what's make it complicated even experienced web developers find cloud hosting a little bit complicated so how much more for a person who doesn't really have that background knowledge or the technical skills, right? So in considering uh, getting a cloud hosting plan, make sure that you also have the necessary skill set for you to truly maximize the use and the beauty and the features of cloud hosting, okay? Next, in terms of security if you can see the screen right now um, there is no ranking when it comes to security this is a case-to-case -case basis no hosting plan is more protected than that of the other than that of the other no matter what hosting plan you choose security is primarily based on the quality of your web hosting provider and your management when it comes to your website now the truth is, everything you put online is at risk. Therefore, you should really invest in your website security. So to combat risks, you must select a web hosting provider that has a good record on the level of their security. On the other hand, you yourself must also take proactive measures in securing your website like purchasing additional features, plugins, or softwares to protect the information from your website and incoming information that your visitors or customers will put in in your website. So security is really a serious matter and in deciding what kind of, in deciding uh, if you, it's a big deal to you that security, if Security, rather, is a big deal for you. 
then you must really search more or if you really, you really need to search and find the best web hosting provider that has the best security offers you can do this by research you can go ahead and visit our websites actually we have reviewed different uh, web hosting providers and you will also see there their track record i mean their record on when it comes to security so perhaps that's really something that you really need to check because in terms of security there in terms of security on web hosting plans there's no ranking it totally depends on your selected web host provider and you as the one who manages okay now um i guess what's playing on your mind right now is the best hosting plan is dedicated or cloud or vps then the last would be uh shared hosting let me just be clear in deciding what hosting plan you need you must consider this the nature of your business or your website um your budget the needs of your website and the skill sets that you have if your website is a blog or a personal site, then shared hosting is the best for you. You don't need a lot of space and you don't expect a lot of traffic between your website and your learn or in your readers. So it is wise to choose shared hosting because you don't need the extra features offered by other hosting plans. So you just pay for what you need. No extra expenses for other things that you don't need. However, if shared hosting is too basic for you and your needs and the needs of your website and you want your own resources and more control over your hosting environment, then a VPS could be the right fit for you. But if you are a large business, like you think your website will pull in around 500,000 visitors a month, um, then dedicated hosting is the most suitable hosting plan for you. Or if your business is a kind of business that needs a high level of security, perhaps because sensitive information like debit or credit card accounts are passing through your website, then um, you must consider a hosting plan, a dedicate, uh, any hosting plan with a web host, with a credible web hosting provider. Or you may have, or you may be any type or any size of business and is considering cloud hosting, which is new and highly reliable hosting today. But just make sure you have the technical knowledge to manage cloud hosting. There is a reason why, why a lot of people opt to use shared hosting and why it is widely used. In terms of user friendliness, it's top notch. So my point here is, the decision, again, will greatly depend on what you need for your business and what you can do as the person who manages it. You don't want to have extra resources and space if you don't need it. Don't go ahead and buy a dedicated hosting plan, which is very expensive, by the way, which has a lot of space. But at the end of the day, you don't really need that much space. So you just wasted your money for something that you don't really need need so th think of that for a moment in trying to decide which hosting plan will you be needing and let again then again it all boils down to what your website is what your goals are and what your skills what skill self skill, skill sets that you have all right so this is actually the end of our discussion and again i suggest you comment down your questions below and uh, because as we leave or yes as we leave our discussion as we end our discussion uh we'll go ahead and do a question and answer portion for you in all and answer all the queries that you have about the discussion that we have today but before that Please fill out the feedback form after this webinar. So here is the link. And we will also uh, put this in the comment section below. You can just go ahead and uh, uh, click it. And after the webinar, after the question and answer portion, please go to this website and fill in our 
uh, feeling of you know, just, a, just a small feedback for us to become better in delivering our webinar series. Here, let me guide you on how to do it, this one. So if you click the link, it will lead you to this, this form. So all you need to do is fill in the necessary information and some questions. How would you rate the overall experience? So basically one question, and then you just submit it. If you think it's excellent, then submit it. So it's only one page. So we really would appreciate it if you would go ahead and fill out the feedback form after our webinar, okay? Sometimes it's really difficult to see what you really need and what you want when there's a lot of options claiming they are the best. So being wise in deciding the best hosting plan is really the first step in guaranteeing a successful website. So take your time thinking about it, go over the goals of your business, do a lot more research before making a decision. Like any other goal you achieve in life, preparation plays a vital role. It may take a while, but just be patient. I know with the advent or the influence of technology today, we expect everything to be fast, but I suggest you take your time and evaluate your options in building your website. Like marriage, this is a commitment that you are entering and you must be really sure in every step you take. This ends our discussion today. Please stand by for our question and answer session. We have Kenneth again to join us today to answer all of your queries. So please stand by as I pass him through.